Hi. Good morning. Namaste. And I'm going to explain to you all at the end of this video exactly what namaste means. I know you guys here at Destiny say namaste. But hi. This video today is a very special tribute to a very dear friend. Her name is Kenya. And Kenya has her YouTube channel. And if you go and visit her, it's 40 Entrepreneur Drive. So you just go right on over there and you visit Kenya. Very smart businesswoman. She's a woman that has a whole lot of wisdom. When it comes down to talking about how to build your business, check her out. That is Kenya. Her YouTube channel is 40 Entrepreneur Drive. But Kenya, I'm out here in nature. This is where Destiny always get her head on. I always say this is where my thoughts just like bam come up to the forefront of everything because I am connecting myself with the divine creator of the universe and yes spirituality this is where I am at at this place of my my journey and I am connected myself with the divine source so I'm not gonna get into all that but this video is a special tribute to you Kenya and this is a question that you have asked you ask destiny what is too much giving? Well, today I'm going to answer that question to the best of my ability and I hope you get this answer. But what I'm going to do, Kenya, I'm going to do a part one and part one of this video is going to talk about unhealthy giving and then at another time I will come back to do a part two of this, uh, of this uh, video and then I'm going to show you the healthy side of giving. Are you ready, Kenya? This is your question. What is too much giving? Let me tell you all that are listening out there. Now, what I say too much giving is, is when you have come to the end of yourself and there is no more of you left. There's nothing within you left to give. But I urge you, please don't get to that place. Never we come to that place where you have exhausted everything and there's nothing left to give and there's nothing left of you I have been in that place I have put myself in that place many many times so I'm giving you some information right now to help you never to reach that place where you don't have it anymore you have given up on yourself you have given up on everything that you believe everything that you enjoy in life because life has been sucked out of you because you have gave in an unhealthy way and people drained you. So hop into it. Hi, Kenya. I love you. You are awesome. So are you ready, Kenya? The question again that my dear friend Kenya asked, she's at 40 Entrepreneurial Drive. That's her YouTube channel. She said, what is too much giving? So uh, today we're going to talk about the unhealthy side of giving too much or too much giving and this is part one helping and giving are character strengths as far as I am concerned but then sometimes our helpful intentions it kind of give away to the functional helping and giving and the solution isn't to stop helping altogether though but it's to set boundaries. When the telltale signs appear showing that it's unhealthy, that's the time when we have to stop and sit back and reevaluate. Is my giving help healthy? Is my giving is helping someone or is depleting someone's life? Okay? So I consider I'm gonna give you 12 red flags. 12 red flags to show you what unhealthy giving is and how these 12 red flags going to show you dysfunctional helping and giving when you get to that part of exhausting everything within yourself that you just don't have it anymore. So consider these 12 flags of dysfunctional helping and giving and I'm going to start with number one. It's increasingly obvious that your help in giving foster dependence. 
irresponsibility, incompetence, or poor character. Because sometimes we have to face the fact that our intentions have gone bad. And continue to help and give under these conditions is just a waste of our resources and it isn't really helpful. So we have to remember, healthy helping promotes other people's growth and their independence and the development of their positive potential. So on the other hand of that, unhealthy or the dysfunctional giving, helping, it does not. It does the very opposite of what healthy giving does. So Kenya, use your helping energies and resources to help people and causes that will truly benefit from your help. Number two, what is too much giving? Number two, the other person has violated numerous agreements with you required about bailouts and they and they just haven't used the help to do the things as they have promised you that they would with the help that you gave. So Kenya, at this point, it's time to stop believing them and giving them chances, at least for now. And once you get strong evidence that they are ready to use your help to progress in their life, then you might try helping them again. But keep those eyes open and keep watching because patterns will form and you will see things that, okay, this pattern is starting all over again. That way you need to pull away. So, when people use your help to escape responsibility over and over again, then it's time or it's best to summon the strength to terminate your helping and continue to give people who don't uphold their end of the body or their end it seems like they're wasting your time and, and, and your resources continue to give to people who don't uphold their strength to terminate your help continue to uphold their end that it's a waste of your time can you and it's a waste of your resources so guess what if you continue then you'll become increasingly angry and very resentful. Number three, the help or giving helps someone to stagnate or become stuck in a age inappropriate stage of development or it will also prevent them from developing needed life or professional skills. So I'm going to explain that. You can be too helpful and in the process game, it will create people that cannot take care of themselves or do their jobs well because they are so dependent upon your always giving. So unhealthy helping can doom others to be less than what they are really capable of. And healthy helping, it promotes others and promotes their independence and their life progress. And it does not retard them, you know? Can you afford Kenyan? What is too much giving? Your helping or giving is gonna require your dishonesty or somehow compromises your integrity. Repeat number four again. Your helping or giving requires your dishonesty or somehow it compromises your integrity. Now what I'm saying, Kenya, is that, for example, when you, it's making bogus excuses for another or covering up for another person or almost never forms, it's, it's never forms of like a healthy helping or giving, okay? So healthy helping doesn't typically involve deception or it doesn't involve secrets nor does it require that you violate your moral code number five what is too much given you have the distinct impression that you're being manipulated into helping or giving now can you sometimes it's obvious 
such as when the other people or the other says or the other things that has been saying it going to trigger your guilt it's going to trigger those guilt feelings and then it's going to inconveniently offers a given opportunity that will reduce your guilt and sometimes it's a it's only a feeling in your gut and that gut intuition is something that you really must follow but your gut warning and it's telling you that someone and their requests for your assistance are off and you got to pay attention like i said let your conscience be your guide you got to go deep inside with that gut intuition it never will lie to you listen can you manipulation though that's where that falls into and that manip that manipulation is only a sign of someone who is willing to be deceitful and to take advantage of others and you should pay very close attention to your warning system that gut intuition the odds of your giving being short-term and having a positive outcome are probably close to zero number six Kenyan what is too much giving destiny let's jump right into that number six your help is increasingly unsustainable given your resources now this is what you're gonna have to do let's say you're gonna have to look for the positive helping sweet spot where you can help without sacrificing your own physical or your mental health without sacrificing your self-respect without sacrificing your financial well-being be willing to back out of negative helping arrangements that sap your resources that sap your good positive energy you have to decline to rescue and help when you really can't afford it you gotta be a, you gotta be very careful of how you diving into jumping there to help everybody and, and rescuing everybody throwing out all your monies and, and giving whatever they want you just gotta you gotta watch it you have to decline to rescue yourself you have to decline to help people when you really cannot afford it because healthy helping means Kenya is helping within your means within the resources that you have that you have enough that you can give and you can pour over into someone else's life number seven Kenyan destiny what is too much given Kenya number seven after helping or giving to someone the relationship with the person has deteriorated due to bad feelings involving the helping or giving relationship so what we do with that healthy helping and giving have long lasting positive effects on a relationship on the other side of it can you unlike healthy giving or healthy helping it strengthens a relationship and it is a fraught with a relationship that is imbalanced that is a relationship that is full of conflict hurt or resentment number eight what is too much given destiny pay attention to number eight can you your helper accommodation it makes it easier for someone to remain physically unhealthy putting off getting professional help and avoiding taking their medication or whatever it may be or working their program or whatever that it may be you can sometimes distort people you can hinder people growth because you're always constantly giving and they know that I ain't got to do no more than this because Kenya gonna pick up that bag and she's gonna pour out everything that I need so I ain't got to go nowhere looking for it be very careful you have to admit when another person's problems or challenges are bigger than you and then you're gonna have to require professional assistance and you may have to tell these people they gonna have to go out there and find another means another way go find some professional help that will help you get some assistance but you're gonna have to withdraw help and all you're giving that makes it easier for someone else for these people to avoid empowering themselves and managing their own condition 
Okay, you're gonna have to recognize when your help it just wears down on another person's discomfort just enough that they're unmotivated to seek the professional help that they really do need. Instead, help by connecting them to relevant resources and appropriate professional and supporting help that's gonna motivate them to seek that to treatment, to seek the help that they need and help them to be able to work on that or work on their own treatment programs, which is gonna help them. And you also can help them to seek out doing their own physical therapy, their own exercises, or sticking to their medical prescribed diet, or taking their own medication, or whatever these strategies and things that it may be for them. That these strategies that they have been taught, you have to help them so they can know that they can manage their own situation or their own conditions. However, can you accept that they might not manage their conditions as you think, or they should, or however you say, well, they should do better than this. Well, sometimes, can you look? You are going to have to accept that they might not manage their condition as well as you think that they should. And that is their choice, and that is their life. And you can't go out there and try to change that. Too much giving, and those type of errors, Kenya, is too much. You need to bike away. Number nine, Kenya, your question. What is too much giving, Destiny? Number nine. Your help or giving in a group setting, it fails to inspire a cooperative group culture where everyone helps one another. Instead, it leads to others to slack on their job and it leaves you feeling taken advantage of. Now, Kenya, when you see this, if you're in a corporate group setting, you're working with a group of people, if you see this, pleasantly announce that you are pulling back and that you are making room for others to step up, to take the ball and run with it, and then you're gonna assist them with your skill, your development, you being such a business entrepreneur, you're a wise business or player, know when to pass the torn. Know when to pass the baton, Kenya. Know when to let them run on. But you stay on the sideline, you cheer them. Assist them with skill development, development, I mean. And then you're gonna show them how to do things that may not, that they may not have learned at some point. But you're gonna teach them and show them how to do things they might not have learned due to you always being so helpful, being to the point where you always been there to bail them out and you never gave them opportunity to experience their own knowledge, their own growth, or, their, or even their own failures. The fact can you let them run with it, run the race with the baton, pass it. And then you get out of the way. You get out of the way. You can stand on the sideline. You can watch them. You can root them more. But they're going to fail. They're going to make mistakes. But you're not going to jump in every time to try to pull them back out because you're hindering their growth. That is when that is when too much giving is too much. Number 10, Kenya. Destiny, what is too much giving? You'll find that what you intended as a one-time modest offer of help or giving has morphed into an unintended long-term obligation that you resent or find burdensome. All of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, you just burden. Like I said, when you come to the end of yourself, that's where you're going to find that place. I'm exhausted, I come to the end of me, I have nothing else to give, I lost the desire, I lost the passion for life, the, the passion to live, I lost the, the passion to even want to be around people, I am drained, and you don't want to talk to nobody, I don't want nobody talking to me. That's that part where you have come to the end of yourself, you don't want to ever come to that place, that place of resentment, that place where you find your life and yourself just being burdened. So can you listen to this? This is a sign of helping and giving entrapment. Remind yourself that your past helping does not serve as a commitment to help forever. 
you didn't commit to this. Had you known that it was going to go this way, you wouldn't have admit to that. Not knowing that it would have gone to this point of exhausting yourself or causing someone else's life to think that they have now some power over you that whenever I can say I need and I can just snap my fingers and hey, can you? Hey, she's there. She's got it. No, no, no. You didn't commit to that, can you? Had you had known that it was going to go this way, then you wouldn't have agreed to it, would you, can you? No. So you are not violating that your own commitment of being a bad person if you back out. Don't make yourself feel like, hey, I let somebody down. Oh, yeah, I failed them. Oh, no, I shouldn't have, you know, dropped the ball. You didn't drop no ball. You passed it too many times around the circle. They dropped the ball. So can you keep being you? Don't let people take your life from you and make you feel guilty like you're not doing enough. You have done too much. It's time to stop letting them violate your giving, your kindness, your generosity. It's time to back out. Number 11, destiny. What is too much giving? Thank you, Kenya. Number 11, you're in a self-sacrificing relationship that reeks of codependence. And that's a bad place to reach, y'all. Can y'all be listen? Number 11, you're in a self-sacrificing relationship that reeks of codependence. Now the relationship is one-sided and closeness is based on one person being a giver and the other person, they're always under-functioning. They're that taker. They're that, 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 that mosquito that's always sucking on you. You don't want to reach that place. You don't want to reach that place of codependence. If people feel like they are going to depend on you, let me just sit here so I can suck me a little bit more blood out of you. Must either get away from me and smack it, can you? Smack it. It's one-sided. And closeness, it is based on one person being a giver. And the other person is now has become an under-functioning taker. And much of the love and intimacy in that relationship is experienced in the context of the one person's distress or poor functioning. And now the other person is rescuing or, or enabling that person. Or the relationship is mostly about one person's excessive giving and the other person's excessive taking. Watch that. No going to run it. And the last one I'm giving you is number 12, Kenyon. That's it. I hear you. What is too much giving? Number 12. This is all I'm going to give you today. Number 12 is you're willing to overlook the ill effects of your helping and giving because it makes you feel or look like a good person. Woo, stop it. Don't go there. That can drain everything out of you. It can take away your life. It could take away your good nature. No. No. Do not do that. Don't do that, Kenya. You're willing to overlook the ill effects of your helping and giving because it makes you feel or look good or look like a good person. You should definitely pull back quick, fast, and in a hurry. Pull back from helping because that isn't truly helpful to the recipient. And it is more about you providing or proving to yourself or to others what a good person or a family member that you are. You ain't got to prove yourself to nobody. You don't need nobody to validate you. You don't need their approval. Baby, you got to be you. You got to do you. You got to give what you know that you can. You got to give what you know that you want to give. And you got to give it on your own terms. And it does, not, it does not have to make you feel good. You don't have to feel good. You know what you're doing is good and right on the inside of you. So, you should pull back Kenya from helping. That isn't truly helpful. And it's not truly helpful to you. 
and it's more about you proving to yourself or to others what a good person that you are what a good heart that you have or what a good family member or a good friend a good co-worker a good mom a good whatever a sister or whatever you don't have to prove that to nobody you don't have to even look for them to say hey you're a good person you pat your own back can you say I know I'm a good person because I know that that goodness is within me or you don't even have to prove that how selfless that you can be or how selfless that you are or how nice that you are none of those things say it does not move me don't let any of those things move you for other people to say you know what you are you know who you are you know exactly what your gut intuition is telling you to do you know what the creator your god is has placing your heart to do he said give and it shall be given to you good measure press down run it over and it shall give unto others i mean it makes this run down i'm just paraphrasing this thing but that's it those are 12 unhealthy ways to know that giving is too much so that is it. I'm going to come back on part two and I'm going to talk about the healthy ways of giving. So stay tuned for that video. It's coming at another day. Can you thank you? And I hope I gave you some answers to that question. What is too much giving? I'm giving you the unhealthy side of that. And that is very important. We got to get that first before we can really learn what healthy giving is. And on that further note, let me clarify something with you also. What is the term namaste and where does it come from? Namaste, namaste. What is the term namaste and where does it come from? Can you, it is not Buddha. It is not Buddha. No, it, does, it did not come from Buddha. Now today, religious and sacred cultural, they have come together in the increasing use of the word namaste. In the English language today, you're hearing that being said a lot by a lot of people. It did not come from Buddha, Kenya. The term is associated with Hindu and associated with yoga because the Hindu always loved yoga and they did yoga and that was a term that the Hindu people would use in, in yoga or it was that word that, that, that the trans, that, well, I'm saying, it was that word that the Sanskrit of the Hindu, okay, let me get this together. It was that term by the Hindu which come from a Sanskrit word, which was literally meaning, I'm bowing, I'm bowing to you, or I bow to you. And it was used as a greeting. So when I say, hey, I bow to the divine within you, I'm bowing to you, I'm bowing to you in respect. And it's a greeting, that is a greeting. It come from Hindu. Namaste come from Hindu, Hindu, and it was, Use of a term a lot of times when they do their yoga or when they greeting someone, they will say, I'm bowing to you or I bow to you. On that further note, I will be back with the next part of, of this video. I'm going to be talking about what is too much giving in a healthy way. So on the next further note, Kenya, thank you for that question. I hope I answered you. Destiny was and see you at the next video. I will see you at your house or mine. Namaste. And I bow to the divine within you.